fertilization and ablation, seeds and fruit setting, germination of seeds. At the end of the lesson the learners should know slash be able to do the following. The structure of a matured slash ripe pollen grain in a receptive stigma, use an illustration slash diagram to explain. The germination of a ripe pollen grain on a receptive stigma until fertilization takes place, use illustration slash. Diagrams to explain. Fertilization process. The terminology, fertilization and double fertilization. The development of a fertilized egg to form a seed slash fruit, development of structure. The distinction between vegetative and stimulant parthenocarpy. The concept, ablactation. The factors that cause slash influence ablactation. Seeds and fruit setting. The concept, fruit setting and seed germination. The development of seeds slash fruit from a fertilized flower, structures. The different types of fruit according to the way they develop such as simple, compound, multiple and side. Fruits. Germination. The process of germination. The distinction between seed dormancy and incision. The basic requirements for seed germination. Introduction. Previous content, plant reproduction, must be related to the current content. The purpose of this lesson is to discuss fertilization and ablation, seeds and fruit setting, germination of seeds. Concepts and skills. Fertilization and ablation. The mature pollen grain has a double wall that consists of a strong outer wall called the axin and a thin, delicate inner wall called the intin. The axin protects the pollen grain from harsh conditions. The nucleus of the young pollen grain is divided by mitosis into two nuclei, namely the sex nucleus and the vegetative nucleus, the pollen tube nucleus. The wall thickens to protect the developing pollen grain. The structure of a receptive stigma. Germination of the pollen grain. When the anther ripens, the wall between the pollen sacs disappears, the pollen sacs burst open in the ripe. Mature pollen grains are ready to be dispersed. The ripe pollen grains, which contain the male gametes, are transmitted by a pollinator from the anther to the ripe, receptive stigma of a flower. The ripe pollen grain germinates. The axin becomes soft and opens. The intin grows through the opening and forms a pollen tube that grows out in the style of the pistil. The pollen grain contains two nuclei. The vegetative nucleus determines the growth direction of the pollen tube. The sex nucleus divides by mitosis to form two male gametes. The pollen tube enters the ovary and the ovule by growing through the micropyle in the embryo sac, the inner part of the ovule, which contains the egg cell. The vegetative nucleus disappears. The tip of the pollen tube bursts open and the two male gametes, haploid sperm cells, are released into the embryo sac. What is fertilization? For fertilization to be successful, the anthers must produce viable pollen and the stigma must be receptive. Fertilization is the fusion of male and female gametes, gametes to form a zygote embryo. The male end. Female gametes are haploid, N, and the zygote is diploid, 2N. During pollination, the pollen grain, which contains the male gametes, landed on the ripe, receptive stigma of the flower. The female gamete, egg, is in the ovule at the bottom of the pistil. What is double fertilization? After the pollen tube enters the ovule through the micropyle, the tip bursts open and the two male gametes are released. The one male gamete fuses with the egg to form a zygote that will eventually develop into an embryo. The other male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei to form a triploid, 3N, nucleus in the center of the large cell in the embryo sac. This will form the endosperm, which provides nutrients for the growing embryo. The development of a fertilized seed bud to form a seed slash fruit. The endosperm nucleus develops to form the endosperm, which provides nutrients for the developing embryo especially in monocotyledonous plants. The nucellus is usually absorbed and disappears. In dicotyledonous plants the endosperm does not develop or it is consumed by the developing embryo end. Can form a small part of the mature seed. The zygote, fertilized egg, develops during mitosis and forms the plant embryo. The embryo sac enlarges and fills the space in the ovule. 
Each ovule develops into a seed. The integuments harden and form the seed coat of the mature seed. The seed contains the dormant plant embryo, the cotyledons, and the protective seed coat. The ovary develops into a fruit that encloses the seeds. The micropyle remains open to absorb water during the germination of the seed. The umbilical cord grows out and forms a small mark, called the hilum, on the seed coat. The embryo stops developing and becomes dormant until conditions are favorable for germination. Parthenocopy Parthenocopy is the natural or artificially induced production of fruit without the fertilization of the ovules. If seeds are present, they are not viable and cannot germinate. Thus, there is no fusion of a male and a female cell. The fruit that is formed is seedless. Parthenocopy often occurs in plants that have several ovules in the fruit, for example figs and melons. It occurs naturally in some plants, for example bananas, pineapples and oranges. Parthenocopy can be obtained by breeding or can be artificially induced using growth hormones such as gibberellic acid. The ovaries will mature without fertilization. Examples of plants treated with gibberellic acid are grape cultivars. The reasons why plants such as grapes are treated with gibberellic acid are because larger fruits are produced. There are larger spaces between the grapes for better air circulation. The plants are less susceptible to fungal diseases if there is better air circulation. Vegetative Parthenocopy Plants do not need pollination or other stimulation to produce parthenocopic fruits. Examples of this are Seedless cucumbers and bananas Stimulative Parthenocopy Pollination or another form of stimulation is necessary for parthenocopy. This occurs when the pollen tube does not reach the ovule or the embryos fall off after fertilization as in seedless grapes. Ablectation Ablectation is the abscission of flowers or small fruits within the first 10 days. There are a variety of factors that cause or influence ablectation. Biological factors that influence ablectation When there is no fusion of the male and female gametes, for example in unisexual female flowers that are not pollinated by male flowers. When there are separate male and female plants, the male plant may be absent so that no fruit setting will occur. When little pollen is produced. When the pollen has a low germination power. If the flower is deformed due to environmental or other causes, which may inhibit fruit setting. Soil factors that affect ablactation include deficiencies of essential nutrients, causing flowers and fruits to fall off. Water shortages, especially during the flowering period. Climatic conditions that affect ablactation include low temperatures, cold, which have a negative effect on germination and fruit setting. Frost, which damages flowers and therefore fruit setting. Excessive rain or moisture, which prevents the moist pollen from being transported by the wind. Wind, which can inhibit insects and birds' ability to transfer pollen. Finally, treating trees with insecticides or pesticides will increase ablactation during flowering. The application of these chemicals can moisten the pollen, which means that it cannot be transferred. The chemicals can also damage the stigma and harm the pollinators. What is a seed? A seed is a developed and ripe ovule and consists of the embryo and endosperm. The embryo is an immature plant from which a new plant will develop if conditions are favorable. It has one cotyledon, seed coat, in monocotyledonous plants and two cotyledons in decotyledonous plants. The cotyledons are attached to a central shaft. The embryo also has a radical, which will develop into the root and plumula, which will then develop into a shoot. The endosperm occurs around the cotyledon and provides nutrients to the developing embryo. The Development of Fruit Fruits are only produced by flowering plants. Fruit setting is the development of fruit from the ovary or flowers. Fruits include oranges, apples and bananas. Vegetables like tomatoes and pumpkins are also fruit. Real fruit developed from the ovary of a flower. Pseudofruits or pseudocarps, for example strawberries, develop from other parts of the flower. The fleshy part of the strawberry develops from the receptacle and the true fruit is the small, seed-like. Akins on the surface. A fruit is a developed and ripe ovary. The wall of the ovary becomes the fruit wall, which is called the pericarp. Fruit seeds are dispersed by the animals that eat them. 
The pericarp consists of three layers. The exocarp is the outer layer. The mesocarp is the middle layer and the endocarp is the inner layer. The fruit protects the developing seed. After the fruit is formed, the other parts of the flower die and fall off. Simple fruits. Simple fruits develop from a single ovary that has one or more pistils. It is divided into succulent and dried fruits. Succulent fruits are fleshy, juicy, sweet, and brightly colored, making them attractive to animals. The fruit wall or pericarp is fleshy. Fleshy fruits include berries, including grapes and tomatoes, the entire fruit wall becomes fleshy and edible. And stone fruits, including peaches, plums and apricots, the outer layer is soft and edible and the endicarp forms a hard kernel surrounding one or more seeds. Succulent fruits. Succulent fruits are fleshy, juicy, sweet and brightly colored, making them attractive to animals. The fruit wall or pericarp is fleshy. Fleshy fruits include berries, including grapes and tomatoes, the whole fruit wall becomes fleshy and edible. Stone fruits, including peaches, plums and apricots, the outer layer is soft and edible and the endocarp forms. A hard kernel surrounding one or more seeds. Dried fruits. Dried fruits have a hard and dry pericarp around the seeds. The edible part is the seed. Dehiscent dried fruit opens and releases the seed. Examples of this are legumes such as peas and beans which develop from one ovary consisting of two rows of ovules. The seeds of these fruits are spread by the wind. Indehiscent dried fruit does not open. Examples of this are nuts such as acorns, peanuts and hazelnuts, where the ovary wall develops into the shell of the fruit. Compound fruit. Compound fruits develop from several ovaries in a single flower or in multiple flowers. Compound fruits are divided into you. See next slide. Aggregate fruits, which develops from several ovaries in a single flower. Each ovary has only one ovule that develops into a seed. Each ovary develops into a small fruit. These small fruits form one larger fruit. Examples of aggregate fruits are raspberries and strawberries. Multiple fruits develop from the ovaries of several flowers of a flower group. Each ovary produces a fruit, which is fused to form a larger fruit. Examples include pineapples and mulberries. The pineapple consists of a bunch of small fruits. Each individual fruit develops from one ovary. Accessory fruit. The fruit develops from the ripe ovary and other parts of the flower. Pseudocarps develop from the ovaries and other parts of the flower. For example, apples, the flesh is formed. From the receptacle, strawberries, it is in fact the aggregate accessory fruit, figs and mulberries. Seed germination. Sufficient water is needed to cause the seed to swell. Oxygen is needed for the embryo to grow. The correct temperature for the specific plant species is required, pea and lettuce seeds germinate and grow. Better in cold seasons and the seeds of plants such as pumpkins, beans and tomatoes germinate and grow. Better in warmer climates. A rest period is often necessary. Many angiosperms will only germinate after a long period of cold. Some seeds need light and others need darkness to germinate. Germination of a ticotyledonous seed. The seed absorbs water through the micropyle and the seed coat. The seed swells, the seed coat opens and the radical, the embryonic or primary root, appears. It anchors the Seedling in the soil and begins to absorb water. The radical grows down into the soil. The hypocotyl, between the top of the root and the cotyledons, grows through the seed coat and pushes upwards through the soil. It is in a curved position, called the hypocotyl arc, while growing upward. The two cotyledons protect the plumula, the epicotyl, that is above the cotyledons. It also protects the first leaves. When the arc of the hypocotyl appears above the ground, it becomes straight and grows upwards. The two cotyledons spread open and the epicotyl and two primary leaves are exposed. 
the epicotyl becomes longer. The side roots develop. Germination of a monocotyledonous seed. The primary root, radical, of the embryo grows through the seed and fruit coverings and grows downwards. Into the soil. The food is absorbed from the endosperm. The plumula, primary, leaf grows upwards. The side roots develop. The first leaves appear. More adventitious roots develop and the radical slash primary root disappears. What is the seed dormancy? When a seed is dormant, it is inactive and no growth takes place. It is like a resting stage for the seed. The seeds are ripe but do not germinate due to environmental conditions that prevent or slow down metabolism and cell growth. After the dormant period, the process of germination will begin if the conditions are favorable. There must be enough water, oxygen, heat and light for this. Factors that affect the dormancy period of seed include plant hormones such as abscisic acid inhibit germination. Plant hormones such as gibberellins can end seed dormancy. If the seed coat is impermeable and inhibits the passage of water and oxygen, which are necessary for germination, it can affect the dormancy of seeds. An example of this is the hard seeds of acacia. The dormancy can be caused by immature embryos that cannot germinate, even if conditions are favorable. Benefits of seed dormancy Due to the dormancy of seed, it can be stored longer. It can also survive poor environmental conditions. Disadvantages of the rest period of seed After a long rest period, seeds take time to germinate uniformly. Wheat seeds tend to live longer. It is difficult to maintain the crop population in the field with seeds that are dormant. Scraping slash nicking of seeds before planting them Scraping is a physical or chemical treatment that weakens or softens the seed coat so that germination can begin. With acid scraping, Chemicals are used to overcome the dormancy period, for example in roses. With mechanical scraping, the seed coat is broken by sanding it with sandpaper or using a needle or scraper. In legumes, the seeds are soaked in boiled water for about a minute. Activity slash Assessment Learners can also use the following sources of information to complete activities. Activity, Case Study, Oxford Previous November and June Papers Summary, the lesson covered the content set out in the CAPS document. Learners who understand the content must use the knowledge and skills to successfully answer questions based on the curriculum content. Learners will be able to use the knowledge and skills as a foundation slash background to proceed to the module. Plant reproduction, asexual reproduction. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more future educational videos.